All right. Well, hello, everyone at home tuning in and welcome to the virtual premiere conversation of our original art film, New Addresses, Ode to Breath. I am Bethany Beatrice Scrabble, and I am the manager of public programs here at the PEM, as well as a co-producer of the film. And I'm thrilled to be here tonight moderating this conversation with an incredible group of collaborators and very dear friends of mine. Before I introduce this team, I just wanna quickly uh, thank the Lowell Institute for supporting this project. Um, a couple of folks who work behind the scenes with us, Bubba, our editor, and Ben Eames, our gaffer, as well as Zara Hussein and Wes Bruce, whose work is fe uh, featured in the film and gave their personal blessing to us in making this project. Thank you so much. Um, so for those who are not super familiar with this project or maybe only was a were able to capture a bit of the film before this conversation, New Addresses and Ode to Breath is a response to Zara Hussein's exhibition Breath, uh, which opened in the Peabody Essex Museum in 2020 and uses music, dance and film to emulate everyday yet profound experience of breathing while inviting not only exploration of Zara Hussein's exhibition, but also Anila Kwayam Aga's All the Flowers Are For Me and Wes Bruce's Where the Questions Live and Exploration of Humans in Nature. So this film features music by composers, Christopher Cerrone, Gala Flagello, who's with us tonight, and Carlos Simon. It's performed by Boston-based ensemble Hub New Music with dance and choreography by Laura Catherine and filmed by Jamtron Media. So as I mentioned, we have an incredible panel of creators joining us to speak about Ode to Breath. So please join me in welcoming again, Gala Flagello, Laura Catherine, give us a little wave, uh, Jeff Ledelitner, Jesse Christensen, and Mike Avatabale. So just a little bit about each of these creators. Gala is a composer, an educator, and a nonprofit director. She is working towards her doctoral degree in composition at the University of Michigan. If you want to learn a little bit more about Gala, you can check out galaflagello.com. Laura Catherine is an educator and artist specializing in environmental and site-specific dance. Her experiences in outdoor education, STEAM, dance-based research, and the arts have informed her work using movement to encourage empathy and connection to the natural world. You can find her at lauracathrine.com. Jamtron is Jeff Ledelaitner, the founder and owner and a creative of the creative production studio that makes original moving, moving content for artists, brands, and nonprofits. Jeff is a director, editor, producer, artist, cinematographer, sound designer, dog lover, and a human being who loves to create. And you can learn more about Jeff at jamtron.com. Finally, Hub New Music is Michael Avatabale, Jesse Christensen, Alyssa Wang, and Nick Brown. They are contemporary chamber trailblazers. They are composed of flute, clarinet, violin, and cello, forging new pathways in their 21st century repertoire. So very cutting edge classical music crew. We're so thrilled to have Jesse and Mike here with us tonight representing. And let's dive right into talking about this project and how it was created. Um, I'll just kind of kick us off by saying, you know, it at PEM, we were spending a lot of time in our department, myself and my close colleague, Daniel Olson, talking about a movement residency, talking about multi-sensory learning. And Mike and I were in very frequent conversations talking about music in the museum. And through all that, in the midst of COVID, this idea was born. And Mike, would you like to kind of chime in about sort of like the initial conception of this project? Yes, so Hub has been working with the Peabody Essex for many, many, many years now. And so there's always this kind of ongoing conversation about what is Hub gonna do at PEM next? And in conversation with Bethany, we, Came to this conclusion that we wanted to do this program around the breath exhibition and hub was kind of charged with the task of coming up with a short program of works that spoke to that exhibition both in a very literal sense and in a more figurative sense and we put these three pieces together christopher Cerrone's new addresses gala flagello's breathing light and um carlos simon's henriette shoes as 
a response to all of the different facets of the exhibition, meaning like breath as a spiritual meditative experience, breath as a fight or flight thing, breath as a means of survival and like all these different facets that we chose to explore. I actually remember the moment when this project like occurred to myself, Danielle, I think we were in a conversation with Laura, Catherine talking about a movement residency for another show that came to PEM in American Waters. Um, and it just sort of was like the serendipitous moment where we had this vision of Laura moving through the breath exhibition and Hub doing what they do, playing incredible music. Um, Laura, do you remember that conversation that we were having? <laughs> Yeah, I do. I thought it was uh, so fitting and um, yeah, very exciting. I do remember that. Absolutely. It feels like a very long time ago. <laughs> I know. It wasn't really. It was probably like January or February of last year that yeah. we started talking about this. It's been almost a year that this project has been in the works. Um, so kind of getting into the elements of, you know, of the piece, the multisensory elements being the music, the movement, and the exhibition spaces. Mike, Jesse, how did you select this repertoire of music? Um, well, yeah, so we have, you know, a bunch of really great pieces that we're playing, um, but the very, you know, immediately, of course, we were drawn to the theme of breath because that was our starting point of, of an exhibit. And we already had a piece right in our back pocket that we had just recorded um, by composer Chris Cerrone, um, called New Addresses. Um, the, the first of the three movements of that piece is called To Breath. And so that just seemed like uh, too good of an opportunity to pass up. Um, but normally when we perform, when we have performed at PEM, we've been sort of stationary in one location for a live performance. But talking about a video that maybe explored different um, parts of the museum was really exciting for us. And it just seemed to make sense with um, Chris's piece, which had multiple movements to use different locations for each movement. And it sort of went from there. Uh, Mike, do you want to talk about why we uh, chose the other two pieces? Yeah, and so Gala, like Pam, is a really longtime friend of Hub and collaborator who we love and adore. I'm going to see if I can make Gala blush on this, this call right here. Um, and so we had a conversation going with Gala because she was planning on writing this piece. And at the same time, we were doing, running this project with Pam and said, well, why don't we take this project we have going with Gala and find a way to kind of like merge it with Pam and like bring all of our favorite things and people together. And so Gala decided to write her piece inspired by Zara Hussein's exhibition Breath. And she'll talk more about that later, much more eloquently than I can about her music. Um, and then the final piece by Carla Simon is a solo piece that I performed um, called Henriette Shoes. And in the Breath exhibition, there is this, um, text on the wall says I can't breathe which is which is reminiscent of, of George Floyd and it this piece stuck out to me in, in that particular line of text because the the work is as you maybe heard in the film is like really elegiac um the alto flute has like this extremely haunting quality and it, it just paired well with this idea of breath of survival, mourning those who have lost breath, um, George Floyd, those who have had their breath taken away from them through the COVID-19 pandemic. And this like soliloquy of a work, this very somber, slow statement, just it just seemed like such a great musical pairing. And, and Carlos is actually someone who we met through the Peabody Essex Museum back in like 2017 and so it's kind of like meta in that way to to bring Carlos's music back in an entirely different context um so it's like just doing stuff with our friends you know yeah <laughs> <laughs> pick all the music we play <laughs> before I kind of loop Laura and her incredibly you know important central part of of creating this film I just want to 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 speak with Gala a little bit about creating this work and you know how you know how did you utilize what you were seeing from Zara and what you um you know knew of her work to create this piece and what was it like translating those those images into sound 
Yeah, thanks so much, Beth, Lenny. And first of all, I, I also want to say thank you so much to Hub and Pem as well, and also Laura and Jeff, obviously, because um, it's a total honor to be included on this project and such a project that feels so meaningful and also expansive, which is the word that came to mind for me when I was looking at Zara's work, um, looking at the Breath exhibit. And then I sort of did a deep dive on a bunch of interviews you all did with her about her work and about this specific exhibit. Um, and there was one moment in one interview where she was talking about the perfect breath, the idea that um, meditatively, um, physiologically to fully fill your lungs, fully get the oxygen that you need, you're supposed to breathe in for five full seconds and breathe out for five full seconds. And I think looking at her art and especially this exhibit, you, you can see that. Um, so translation is totally the right word, Bethany. Um, it is really a direct translation into my piece, Breathing Light. Um, it opens in what you might call the tempo of seconds, which is quarter note equals 60 or 60 beats per minute, which is the second um, with five chords. So if uh, you wanted to start out this piece trying to have the perfect breath, um, you could. But then as Mike mentioned, this is a piece too about fight or flight about losing and trying to regain that perfect breath. And so uh, the ensemble gets thrown off course throughout the, the, the piece and tries to find their way back to the per perfect breath. So it was a total joy working with Hub on this piece, collaborating, uh, especially with Mike and Jesse, sending screenshots back and forth. Is this possible? How do you feel about this part of the piece? Um, especially some of those uh, like trickier, super rhythmic hockety moments that uh, kind of illustrate anxiety and the lack of the perfect breath. Um, yeah, I had an absolute blast and, and Zara Hussein's work is totally incredible. Thank you so much, Gala. Yeah, I mean, I, I personally, it the way that your piece is nestled in between Chris and Carlos's work is, um, it's just such a powerful moment. And, and it is like really unsettling at times, but also um, just feels right in, in these other moments. So yeah, thank you so much for sharing that. Um, I want to bring Laura into the, the front of the conversation here. Um, there are just a couple things about this process that I've found like so incredibly mind blowing, like how you choreograph 10 minutes of movement, <laughs> can't physically rehearse excessively in the space. Um, Laura, tell us a little bit about your process and, and, and how you came to create what you did. Yeah, um, well, I will, I will begin by saying that a lot of my movement practice is actually improv. So um, while there was um, like a loose outline and a coloring page, a lot of what you see in the final product is, of what I colored in is improv. Um, because a lot of what I was doing was um, reading the energies in the room, responding to the individual different instruments, looking at the shapes in the exhibitions, um, looking at the colors, even, you know, even getting energy from Jeff as he's filming. So, you know, that's while the, again, there were certain moments that were specifically choreographed. Um, I love site specific improv and I love being, um, like that vessel that kind of is trying to translate one medium to another medium um, because uh, my body is, is the art in this case. So it's just kind of its sim simplest form uh, to express all the things that were happening from the input of the exhibitions, the music, um, the light. So um, I, you, I think a large part of of the choreographic process was um, meeting with Mike and Jesse and coming up with shot lists and where we would be specifically and points in the music when we would be like, oh, that's when we should start ascending the stairs. Right. And so then, um, so it was a really collaborative process. And then Jeff came in to, to create the shot list. And then from the shot list, um, I'm looking at pictures of the exhibitions and drawing shapes from them and at home, like in my living room or at the circus center where I work, like making shapes um, and trying to kind of link it all together. Um, 
I think that's a perfect yeah. segue into like the physical spaces that we occupied. And I know I can say, you know, we had a, a walkthrough as a group. I think it was Mike, Laura, Jesse, and me initially that got into the museum and you know, there, we, we started in breath um, and we just happened to go up the melon staircase on our way up. And we all just kind of looked at each other and we're like, well, like we have to do something. We have to, yeah. Because if this isn't like a, an emulation of breath in this physical space of the museum, like, I don't know what is. Um, and it just sort of like led you right up into, you know, the spherical haven of, of breath that Zara created. Um, yeah. And, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. It, it, it again, um, another word that comes to mind that seems to, to come up in these conversations and in the spaces is container um, and a container for breath. Mm -hmm. um, one of the main simple points of inspiration was expansion and contraction. So I'm, there's a mo and so within that expansion and contraction, I also enjoyed all the containers and would explore, I expect that uh, idea in choreography, but that, yeah, that staircase, it wasn't originally on our list. No. Um, and I have frozen, you are all frozen. <laughs> We came back. We Do got you have me. We got. We have you. you we got me? what you were saying for sure. But I think on that note, like moving into Anila Kwayam Aga's installation, all the flowers are for me, which is sort of like a a pinnacle um, installation at the museum. I mean, it's definitely you know something that people return to see. It's kind of like their photo op moment. I mean, I think the second we walked in there again, just like moving through the physical space of the museum, the connection felt like inherent that, you know, this was another space that we would need to occupy. And I think Mike, you really called it out. And I think you had, you, you could hear, I think Chris's piece like beginning in there because it has like, this whimsy that that kind of starts you out when listening to that piece with, you know, the flowers up on the wall and, you know, the the whimsy of, you know, the shadow play that was going on in there. Um, anything you want to add to that experience of of being in that space for the first time? Oh, yeah, it, it was my first time walking into that installation. Um, and it is the most striking thing ever in person. It's the whimsy of the flowers, but there's also something so like ceremonial about that space and very like quite meditative. I find it to be a very calm space to be in. Um, and the thought of pairing the first movement of Chris's piece in that space it made so much sense because as you probably heard in the film, there's this kind of constant rhythmic undulation and the flute part going like deca 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 deca. And that kind of lures the listener into this kind of Zen meditative like space. And then from there, Chris kind of builds on that with all these col coloristic things and the cello with the harmonics and the violin making all these kind of like sparkly sounds, which for me kind of, um, emulated the, the the flowers being projected onto the wall. So it has this like aura, this meditative aura around the whole thing with these kind of little pointillistic sparkly moments. And it just like, they seem to pair so well together. And I, I was really happy when we were in post like editing, just like how, how well I think that wound up translating. Totally. Jesse, do you want to chime in anything? I, I, it was just, all the spaces were just so like, I, I don't know charged with energy and and like like you guys said it was we, we we had been playing chris's piece quite a bit at that point and we walked into these spaces and it was like oh yeah this is it this is going to be amazing and then you took us down to um where the questions live can you Which name the like artist fluke. that was like a fluke moment like yeah. laura is performing in a piece in that film we ran into our friend karen bame yeah. And we all just ended up going down there together. But yeah, please carry on. Yeah, I, I forget who the artist is that um, created that space where the questions Wes live. Wes Bruce. Yeah. Oh, that's Wes. That's right. Yeah. Um, and it was so all of a sudden you're just sort of lifted off the ground. You're kind of floating. And immediately we thought of the, the, the middle movement of Chris's piece. And so uh, 
I feel like we on the storyboarding end were very fortunate with um, the spaces that PEM has available. They were just so evocative and, and just were, seemed to be crying out for music. Um, and that gave us a good starting point for figuring out like, okay, what's this all going to kind of look like? Because we're like, well, we know we need this movement in this room and this movement in this room. And then from there, we just started like, I don't know, getting weird and seeing like, what can we do? I don't know, you know? Well, let's bring in like the final and like such an important character in this whole process, which is our incredible Jamtron, Jeff. Um, you know, Jeff came into this process super late um, and sort of like saved the day. Can I say that in a sense? Like we, the timelines, the schedules, the injuries, just all the things that happened um, surrounding producing this film. And, you know, Laura had an incredible relationship with Jeff and brought him in for us. Jeff, tell us what it was like coming into this project with all, with this crazy crew um, and create yeah. what you were able to create. For sure. So yeah. Um, first, thanks for having me. Thanks for having me part of the project. It's just so, it's, it's so much easier to work when, with everybody's just super talented. So my job is so easy. Um, and Laura and I had a relationship um, w with PEM, working with I Am Body. Uh, we had a relationship outside of this. So we've been like pairing video and dance together in some way for a couple of years now. Um, and so that was just a no brainer. You know, if she's gonna right. ask me to do something, I'm like, yeah, we'll just do it. There's no friction there. Uh, and plus, when you spend so much time like we did with I Am Body, traveling the the the, the vast wilderness, you get to you just you, there's a language that you have with someone like, oh, I'm gonna be here, you're gonna be there, I'm gonna do that. It, there's almost I don't know if we even talked much on set at the museum, and I I mean I came in I late to the project, like you said. And you guys teed everything up. I mean, the storyboard was there. The ideas of where things were going were there. Um, then we did a tour. Um, and there's like, what a gift to say, oh, it, we have an incredible set for you to film. <laughs> it's a museum. It it's uh, beautiful. <laughs> uh, so I'm like, oh, the set is built. Pre, It's been there. So, you know, that's sort of like a hack into making things looking amazing. Make the set look beautiful and put talented people in the middle of it and not to mention um hub new music I, I, I we did like 10 takes in some of these rooms like not, not missing a beat just going off of like like a like a boom box not really playing at full capacity having to mime things yeah. intricate parts like gala was saying like i was so worried that the sync was going to be off like, like something was going to be wacky with like all of these little pieces. So my job was to really get coverage and respond to what was happening. So it was a little bit part documentary and part following this, this script so that the ideas and the moments were hitting and these little like plot points and cues and things were hitting. And then it was just to react the way Laura and I are used to doing and then add some like great musicians and a beautiful score um get some coverage of that and and then and then work with an amazing editor and bubba and say hey slow it down here let's speed it up here like oh the music you know it's really the music is telling the story and we're just trying to honor the the vibe of that and whether it's cutting back to making it slowing it down or bringing the energy up and i'm hoping we did some you know, we, we nodded to that in, intention properly. So it was super fun. It was just not a job. And like, and at the end of the shoot, when you, 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 you put trust in artists and there's not a lot of back and forth and that's sort of the benefit of coming to a project late. Um, and Bethany, you just saying like, you guys are talented, make something rad. Um, that's a, I think that's like the way you should make things. And once too many people are trying to paint a picture, it gets all wonky. And so you let you really let us just do our thing, even in the editing. Like we were nothing. There was no micromanaging. No, it was just like, yeah, this is it. Like, do your thing. Make Full it. trust. Yeah. So Full trust. I mean, I, it's a it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. 
Yeah, I mean, I again, I, just having the talent that was in the room, I, those first few takes in All the Flowers Are For Me, I'll never forget. Um, just seeing you, Jeff, go into action. Laura is full out. Um, you know, Hub is full out with their performance. It was it was probably the highlight of my professional career, getting to witness what you all did in that one day of shooting for the first piece of, of the film. Um, the piece, the gala's piece that you see um, was a separate day of shooting that happened in August. Um, it was just an incredible process. And, and to the editing, there were a couple moments where you sent out versions for us where it was just like, how did you capture that? Like, I feel like I'm fully seeing the energy of this space channeling through everyone in the room. Um, and just uh, your setup here, the rig you wore, I don't even know if what's that, what that's called, Jeff, but that was super rad just like you were a camera like a, a camera robot man um, <laughs> yeah. that was super that was just really amazing um and then of course like getting to come back um in august with hub um and just really focus in with gala's piece in the space was another really incredible day of filming anyone want to chime in about that experience on that day um i i, I will um I think I was, that room was the, the room itself was the toughest when we walked in. The art is incredible. So as a, as a patron of the museum, you get lost in the art. Um, and it, it's, it's intoxicating. It's, it, it's just everything. And that's when you're putting a camera, when you're putting a square or rectangle into a space, trying to capture it, um, that was the biggest challenge. And, you know, thank God we could arrange players. We can put up some lights and things like that. And we didn't shoot in the, the cave, the projection on that second day for that piece, um, which was another sort of like, another like cheat was, oh, that is, everything's dark. You have this beautiful projection. Laura's in front of it. it it's just like a no brainer. When you get to a room that the room isn't the feature like in Wes's and All the Flowers, um, that was that was tricky so we tried to that was a, a balance of let's get let's focus on the players and and make it about the energy of of their response to the room and cutaways to to the art but you really have to visit that room like you can't you can't not it's just too much totally I, I just want to underline the fact that yeah we we really relied on jeff um that for shooting gala's piece um, because it was, we had a clearer storyboard for um, the Chris Ron, uh piece and knowing some of the dynamic things we wanted to do. But then um, for uh, for Breath, uh, Jeff came in and, and saved the day. And we had already developed sort of a working creative relationship by then. And so we knew like, okay, we'll let Jeff take it from here and, and steer the ship. And I think it came out beautifully. Yeah, and I just want to extra commend Jeff too because I saw that video for the first time and Mike will attest, I like texted him on, in all caps. I was like, this is incredible. If I had any facility in filming things, this is what I would have wanted to do too. So, I mean, from composer brain to to videographer brain, it like it totally translated for me as well. I think that that's a really yeah. great point, Gala, is like all these different brains in this virtual space just somehow were able to connect and channel to each other in a way that created the beautiful film that you all can now enjoy on YouTube anytime that you would like. Um, so it's just really amazing and such an honor. And just further, I just wanna say, I'm so thrilled for all of you to be able to have this moment to, to speak about this process and share. Um, you know, it's been an obviously an enormous challenge with COVID-19, um, though it was part of the inspiration for this project, sort of navigating how we share it and how we celebrate it and certainly how we film it and create it. Um, but 
it's just really special that you're all able to have this moment and this film now is out virtually in the world. It was, it did premiere in September and was available to view in the, in the museum up through November. So that was a really cool experience for people. And it was so, I mean, for me, I, I got to hear the majority of the feedback, which was incredibly positive, but again, I'm just so thrilled for you all to be able to, um, you know, share this now with the world. Um, it, it's just been such an honor working with you all. Um, and yeah, I mean, any other last final comments that folks want to make, please like jump in now. This is your moment, my people to, to talk about anything that you want to share. I just want to uh -huh. say thank you, Bethany. Like your just yes, and I think my goes to your just facilitation and responsiveness and flexibility and just you know your support of us as artists and your trust. Um, you know, I I put us. I probably created a lot of hurdles with my various injuries, and so you know just the the support and flexibility, the many times that I was like, we can get another dancer and I can choreograph. And you were like, no, this is it. So, I mean, I personally am so grateful to, to be involved and your just continuous support. Thank you so much. Yeah, all this thank you. Bethany and we all like had our rounds of like telling each other how much we love each other. And I feel like it would be like, we can't not say how you were the backbone of this entire project. Like just this central point. And also Danielle, Danielle, um, um, the entire PEM team that we worked with was just so on the ball and so organized. And like, it was this perfect balance of giving us the space to create something together, but also having the security of knowing that we were always really well taken care of. We knew when things were going to happen, everything was so organized and it. Like, you, Bethany, and the entire PEM team like created a space where we could do our best work. And that is not always the case. I think that's something we've learned throughout COVID is that you will not always be given the space to do your best work. And to have that is such a privilege. And I'm, I'm so happy that we can now share this with the world for the whole YouTube to watch. Yes, for the whole YouTube and beyond. Truly, the honor is, is all mine, guys. Thank you so much. Um, it's been amazing. I just also want to shout out Chip Van Dyke and Corey Dodge, thank you so much for your behind the scenes assistance and consultation along the way. Again, the education team, Danielle Olson, Siddhartha Shah, thank you so much. And of course, the artists, Zara Hussein, Wes Bruce, Anila Kwayam Aga, thank you for your vision. Um, and please folks enjoy new addresses, Ode to Breath and, and share it with the world. Um, and we hope to see you at PEM soon. Have a great night, everyone. Thank you.